What's up, divas? What's up, divas? So it's your girl, April, and it's time for Real Talk Wednesday. So y'all already know it's really Monday. I was sitting here trying to camouflage, conceal my tan line, okay? I didn't want to get back on here with another tan line because I'm not really trying to put my makeup on today. And I was going to change these lashes because... I've had them on um, for like two days, these strip lashes, two days without the removal, y'all. Y'all know I tell y'all I'll be using this duo glue right here, this one. This one right here, you guys, is the bomb. And please excuse my nail. Let me tell y'all. <sighs> okay, first of all, I told y'all last week that the guy was saying I had to get some new nails put on. I'm, look, I'm about to woosah this. Let me just woosah this. Because that's the one reason why I had these same nails on since December. Because I'm scared to go and have them removed. That part is so painful. Like, for them to stick that card under your nail and just wedge it off like it doesn't even exist. Oh, my God. The pain is real. And they don't even be... They don't really be sensitive to your emotions. There's no empathy. There's no sympathy. It's just like, let me just get this nail off. So I really don't want to go and get them taken off and removed, but I know I have to. But if you guys, any of you ladies know any easy way to get these damn acrylic nails off on my own without hurting myself, please, please put something in the information, the description box, the comment box down below, because I these things hurt. When I had to get one fixed prior, oh my God, it hurt like hell to get it off. Like, they just take either a regular fingernail, or like a, you know, a fingernail, or a regular, like, an ATM card, or, you know, like a plastic card, and they just slip it under. And that's like, God, can you give me, give me a chance? Like, that make me not want to go get my nails done. Like, that's the reason why after I get them removed, I don't even know if I want to get them back on. And I feel real good with the nails. You know, I feel ladylike. I feel cute. I feel fancy. You know, I always use the word fancy. I just, I really like the nails. I really like the nails. I got used to them and I like them. But I'm just, I'm really scared about getting them removed because that part hurts like a bitch. Like, it seriously hurts like a bitch. And I'm trying to see, you know, one lash is always, like, jacked up. Okay, really jacked up. Like, I guess because I slept and it just... Oh, God. Anyway, I got some new lashes, you guys. Let me tell y'all before we get into this real talk. Okay, so, you know, there's a Dollar Tree, like, down the block for me. Not the one that I always frequent. But there's the other one. There's the other one that I really don't mess with unless I need, like, dish detergent or something that I, you know, for the house to clean with. If you really want to buy something from the Dollar Tree, then you really don't want to go there. But for some reason, they always seem to have, like, loads of lashes. Now, y'all know I got the Tony pair, like, lo loads of those. But LA Girl, LA Color, excuse me. LA Colors came out with some new lashes. There's, like, four or five, six different ones. But I only got one particular one. And these are the new ones from LA Colors. These are the drama, what is it? Dramati, Dramati Lash, Dramati Lash, and this one is called Dashing, um, there's like a pink box, there's a blue box, they also got individuals, um, so I only got the purple box because these seem to be the fullest, but I like them because the bands are really small, but I really like these ones, the bands are really thin, which makes it a whole lot easier to apply, and I got those right at the Dollar Tree, you guys, right at the Dollar Tree, um, Comfortable, reusable, easy to apply, lightweight. And I really prefer my bands to be really thin. What about you guys? What do you prefer when you, you know, you choose your lashes? Do you like the bands or does it matter to you? You know what I'm saying? How do you feel about the bands? And then they also had these, which are the lash trios. They had the individuals which comes with three clusters together. Or you can get the ones that are single. You know what I'm saying? Why do it look so yellow? Like, come on. All right. And then they had these ones. I didn't get the individuals because I already have enough individuals. Not by LA Colors, but just like by a different brand. So I got those. And um, I got about six pairs of these and six pairs of the other ones. I don't really even need lashes because I think I have way too many. This one right here, though, is driving me insane. Um, and, and, and I get my lashes from one particular spot online only, which is Shop Miss A, you guys. I love Shop Miss A. They have loads of makeup for a dollar, for a dollar fifty-five. 
And like, I like to buy their lashes. They have so many different ones to choose from. And um, the bands be thick and then some bands don't be, but I get the AOA Studio ones like this. But um, yes, loads of makeup for a dollar at Shop Miss A and foundation. They have everything your heart can desire for like a dollar to a dollar fifty-five. Lip gloss, honey, keep your lips popping. You know what I'm saying? Keep your lips popping. And my lips always be looking dry for some reason. But um, yeah, I got a whole bunch of stuff in this bag right here, you guys. So, before we even get started on this Real Talk Hunties, we're going to do a quick promo. You know, it's just a little promo commercial. You know, I'm pretty sure you girls love makeup. And I'm pretty sure you all love to save a little bit of coins. So, you know, we're going to do a real quick promo. And then we're just going to get into this Real Talk, okay? And then, like I said, leave me some comments below about... A good way to remove these without having them to pop them off at the salon because I'm not really good with pain on a threshold of one to ten but this girl mm. Guys, if you got a real talk and you want me to talk about your real talk, you know what I mean? You can always send me an email to aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Make sure to put in the subject line, real talk. Even though this email is only for real talk only, you know what I'm saying? I really, you don't really have to do that, but you, you know. If you want to change your names in the email, like if your name is Abigail, but you don't want nobody to know, you can change it and let me know if you did so. If you don't do that, I'm going to just automatically think you forgot. And I'm going to just go ahead and change it on my own. Great. The light is just beaming right there on my forehead. Great. <sighs> Whatever. And this lash is driving me crazy. But we're just going to leave it as it is. So let's just get into this real talk. Okay. Huh? 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 What? Damn. 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 Okay, real talk. I hate to say this. I'm done here. Hi, April. My name is... You can call me Kelsey. I wrote to you years ago. You did a real talk about me and this guy from school. He moved to L.A. for work, and I visited him recently. I'm still obsessed with him, and he adores me. But that's not really the point of this. Your advice did help a lot. Anyways, I have or had this friend. We will call her Destiny. That is dating another friend of mine. So her friend Destiny is dating one of her friends. 
unless you know the both of them, you wouldn't even know they were together. Basically, you wouldn't even know they were a couple. And it's not just because he doesn't post her. I get privacy. I get it, privacy. Even if he posts whoever else he's with and brags on them. If she's okay with it, then I can't judge. But you wouldn't know they were together, a couple, because he doesn't act like they're together or have been for years. She told him when she was 21, she needs to know where they're going by the time she's 25. At 25, she told him she wants to be married and have a child by the time she's 28. She's 30 and he's telling her to ask about kids after he turns at least 35 and doesn't want to get married. Although online, you wouldn't think they're together and that would be the case. She asked me what to do. I told her she should have left him alone years ago. All of us were telling her she was making a huge mistake when she decided to change and be the only person in that relationship to compromise in order to stay with him. She doesn't want to see it as him using her, but he is. Destiny has accused me of wanting him because we are so much alike, she and I. And because, and I quote, the nigga you want, this is what her friend Destiny is saying. Okay, so Destiny has accused me of wanting her man because we are so much alike. And because, and I quote, Destiny has said, the nigga you want is in LA and I guarantee you, he don't want no parts of you, which is not true. He actually wants me to move out to LA and be with him since I was supposed to move out there long before he did, but had to take care of a sick family member. So I stayed behind. And she continued on and on and on and said some other real foul shit. Destiny basically went off on everyone for telling her the truth about him yet again. We have fallen out before, but she has never thrown anything in my face, nor I to her. It's like she was trying to get me upset about something I have the power to change. And I really don't know what to do with her or to say to her at this point. And that was the end of it. So KLC has her friend, Destiny. Destiny is also dating Kelsey's other male friend. And it seems like they've been together for some time because when Destiny was 21, she told the boyfriend that she needs to know where they're at and where they're going by the age of 25. And by the age of 25, she has went and told him that she wants to have children and be married by the age of 28. And now Destiny is 30. So God damn. So I'm gonna say they've been together, Destiny been with this dude for like 10 years cause she's 30 and when she turned 21, she needed to know where she was at. So let's just say that's an even 10 years. Like Kelsey said, you wouldn't even know they was a couple. You wouldn't even know they was a thing. You wouldn't even know they were relationship goals. You wouldn't even know anything about them if they were a couple because nobody knows. He don't talk about her. He don't post her. It seems like he's posting other people and bragging on them, but not her. And she's fine with it. But old dude is like, um, you can ask me about kids when I turn like 35 and I don't want to get married. He didn't say you can ask me about getting married. He just said straight up, you can ask me about kids and I do not want to get married. But that's not only that. Kelsey and Destiny have a falling out. Kelsey been trying to tell her best friend or her good friend, yo, he's not the dude for you. Not just her, but other people are telling her he's not the dude for you. He's using you. You should have left him a long time ago. And Destiny is not even trying to hear that. Destiny has, Destiny has went off on Kelsey and said, you want my man? Basically, she's probably saying you want him. You jealous the man, the dude you fucking with in LA. He don't want no part to you. You know what I mean? Y'all, either way, First of all, she don't know what to do. That's like 10 years. I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm not about to. Destiny, <laughs> I'm not sure if you know this is about you, but whoever's watching this and you have like the same predicament, girl, if you were a dude, a man, a nigga, a ninja for 10 years and plus, not even 10 years, but if you're with him for 10 years and he don't, you know what I'm saying? He don't want to marry you. Nobody even know y'all together. Nobody even know y'all a couple. Nobody even know y'all boo thing. Nobody even know he's smashing. Nobody, you know what I'm saying? Nobody even knows why are you bothering? Like there's a reason why he don't want anybody to know. Maybe that's because he want to have his cake and eat it too. But also the reason why he's doing this is because Destiny, 
You allowing him to do this to you. You allowing him to walk all over you like you a fucking doormat, a front door rug, drag you on the floor like you cleaning the floor. Like, come on now. You could tell somebody something for their own good until you blew in the face, until they blew in the face, bitch, until you can't breathe no more, okay? You could say that shit 30 different ways to them at 30 different times. They not gonna get the shit until they ready to get it, okay? Destiny could be in a domestic violence relationship and you, as a friend, looking in on the front of the outside, could tell her, you need to leave him. He's no good for you. He's troublesome. He's cheating on you. You could tell her this all day long. You could offer her ways out. You could tell her she could come stay with you. You could tell her, girl, I can help you find a new man. You could offer her payment. They not gonna leave until they good and ready to. And that's just the sad part about it. But that's just the reality about it. And you get tired of it when you get tired of it. Sometimes it take people a lot longer to get tired of shit. Sometimes it take a really dramatic, situation, traumatic situation for that person to finally wake up and realize, yo, this nigga ain't for me, or this bitch ain't for me, like straight up, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I can't tell you to stop giving her advice and I can't tell you to stop talking to her because as long as you a friend, you are gonna continue to tell her what's for her own good and she gonna still continue not to listen to you. Sometimes we take that personal and you don't have to take it personal because you know why I've been there. And it don't matter if the nigga's beating her head in. She not gonna leave until she ready to leave. And that's the unfortunate part about it. Sometimes people leave and it's too late when they leave. Sometimes they don't even get the opportunity to leave. But I'm telling you like this, your friend, she feeling some type of way. And you know what I'm saying? You know the old saying, truth hurts. You know what I'm saying? Truth really does hurt. When somebody tell you something for your own good, you don't wanna see that. Yeah, we, sometimes we get in our own feelings and be like, oh, you just hating. Just like Destiny did to Kelsey. She hating. She basically let her know you hating, you jealous, you know what I'm saying? You mad that nigga in um, LA don't want no part to you. First of all, sweetheart, <laughs> this is why I would have had to tell you. I'm telling you something for your own good. We ain't talking about my relationship. We talking about you. And that's right there, let you know that the girl, you know, she not ready to face the truth because when you try to tell her about how she dealing with old dude, and how he dealing with, with her, and then she throw your shit in it, that right there lets you know she ain't ready for the truth. She ain't even trying to hear you. And sometimes what's unfortunate, you gotta just step away from people like that. Let me tell you, my mom, my mom got a good friend. They've been friends for God knows how long. You know, they met at work or whatever. She's like 50 something, okay? And she been with this one man for like 20 years, okay? He's a bum ass nigga. When I say he's a bum ass nigga, he don't work. He don't do shit. Raymond don't work, okay? He don't do shit. You know, he claimed he can't work because he got asthma. I, You know, listen, let me tell you something. My mother has told me so many different stories about her friend at work. And it's sad because she's a nice woman. She's a really nice woman. She works two jobs while this nigga lay up in a house and don't do shit. Like, when I say he don't do shit, he don't do a fucking thing. This man will get up and make breakfast for himself with the food that she done bought. Like, come on now. Oh no, excuse me, he gets food stamps, okay. First of all, I'm not gonna date a grown ass man that gets food stamps. And I'm sorry, but I don't give a fuck if you got asthma. I don't give a fuck if you got diabetes. Nigga, I don't give a fuck if you got MS, AIDS, COVID, okay, arthritis, all right? I don't give a fuck if you got one leg. You best to get you a job or some source of income up in here. You're not about to lay up in my house all day while I work two jobs, man. Like, come on, Lyle, let's be serious. And I think like, like I told my mom, you know, he live in her house. The house is paid for, you know, was left behind by her mother because her mother passed away. And um, he live in her house and just don't do nothing all day long. Don't do a goddamn thing. Like when I say a goddamn thing, a goddamn thing. And before he was living in the house, he was living in his own little room, you know, because in New York, you can rent rooms. He was living in his own room and this woman was paying for it. Like, but you don't even get any D. Like, they don't have relations, like my mom says, relations. You know, F and F sex. So they don't even have relations, okay? Um, so you mean to tell me that I'm paying for you and we, you're not even giving me the D? Man, you best to go ahead about that shit. But it's just unfortunate. Like, I, I was telling my mom that some people, some women just don't want to be alone. Like, they just don't want to be alone. And I can't really understand that part because I'd rather be by my fucking self than be with somebody that make me miserable and want to be by myself. Like, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, why would anybody want to be with somebody that just make them fucking miserable just to say that you got a man? Just to say that you can get love when you want it or maybe even not? Like, what is the whole point of being in a relationship with somebody if you miserable? And if you have been with somebody for 
damn near 10 years or 10 years. I, I'm really feeling like it's 10 years because she said when she turned 21, she then told him. So it's been at least 10 years. So here's my thing. Look, you know, I, I'm like tight now. Like you've been with somebody for that long and that nigga ain't trying to marry you. Like, I mean, marriage ain't for everybody, but you, you gonna have to give me some type of commitment. Nigga, you have to buy me a house or something, you have to give me some, you gonna have to open me a nice savings account, you know what I'm saying, uh, something, you gonna have to show and prove, and for, for him to not post you on his social media, like, okay, so, I don't like, okay, I don't do social media every day, like, you don't see me posting on Instagram every day, I barely even go on Snapchat, um, I only got a TikTok account because I like to look at one particular TikToker. I am Scotty with his handsome self. But um, I don't really do the social medias. I don't never post nothing on Facebook every once in a while. Um, so I get that part. Like, you don't have to prove to the world that you're in a relationship with anybody. That's not, you know what I'm saying? Like, some people take social media to a whole different level and they need to be validated by it. And I really don't feel like, you know, what I do in my spare time is my business. Like, I don't need to record every fucking thing. I don't need you to know who I'm with, you know what I'm saying, or anything like that. Like, I just don't feel like you have to. And if you want to, that's fine. But you would think in like the 10 year span that he would at least post it like at least five photos, maybe one a year, I don't know, something, you know? Like, just at least to let her and the world know he's happy, he's in a relationship. So maybe he is using her, you know what I'm saying? Kelsey, maybe he is using her, but that's your friend. And regardless, y'all had a falling out. And she said, Destiny did say some real foul shit to her. You know what? Sometimes you got to step back from a person. If you've told them over and over countless times how much an asshole he is to her and how she's going in the wrong direction with him. And not only have you told her that, other people have told her that too. So she can't just say you hate and what about the other people? And that's what I would bring to her attention. Hey, Destiny, you know, we need to have a serious talk. Can we can we meet up? Can we go out to eat? I told y'all before, when y'all want to talk to somebody and it's a situation like this, take them out in public. I'm not saying we got to go for a walk, but I'm saying don't go to their house and have the conversation and don't go to, you know, don't come, you know, don't, don't, don't meet up in an apartment or house because y'all in the privacy of your own. And shit can get a little bit out of hand. Voices may raise because y'all ain't in public. I always feel like, you know, when it comes to, like, a friendship or whatever, let's go out to eat. We can sit across the table from one another. That way we give eye contact. And that way we out in the public. And hopefully we both grown enough, we both mature enough to where ain't nobody going to get out of character. Ain't nobody going to act childish. Ain't nobody going to act besides themselves and want to cause a scene. You know what I'm saying? That's what, what I would hope. But I would really like to sit outside somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Basically, per preferably early in the morning. And I say early in the morning, let's go out for breakfast. I say this because... We've already had a good night's rest. Hopefully, we're able to refresh. You know, in the morning time, we refresh. We revive. You know what I'm saying? So, we haven't had nobody irritate us yet. So, I hope. You know what I'm saying? And morning time is really a good time. You can sit. You know what I'm saying? You, you've you been refreshed. Let's go have some breakfast together. You know? Because things that, you know, go on to have lunch or going to have dinner, that's okay, too. But... I'm coming to meet you and I have something really heavy on my chest. I'd rather say it in the morning because that way I've been refreshed. I've slept on it all night. I would rather say it in the morning opposed to going at night because I had all day. Somebody could have pissed me off on the way here. Somebody could have pissed me off at work. Somebody could have pissed me off in the store. And you carry, sometimes we carry that negative vibe, that negative energy throughout the day. And to avoid all that, I just say let's go in the let's go in the morning time. Let's have like a nice breakfast together, and we can sit across from one another at the table. You know what I'm saying? I say this because when we in somebody's house, it's many different advantages to giving somebody eye contact. They got a TV, they got children, they got they just a whole different scenery. We don't really have to give them eye contact. But when we somewhere out eating in public, we sitting across from one another. We got to give you eye contact. Like I'm giving y'all right now, I got to give you eye contact. And of course, we don't want to cause a scene. However, there are some people who just don't give a fuck and will cause a scene out in public. Those are the type of people you just need to avoid, girl. But if you can feel like you mature enough, and hopefully Destiny is too, it seemed like she was really caught up in her feelings. You know what I'm saying? And she also seems like she's a hothead too. You know, hard-headed, hothead. She seemed like one of those types. But I really feel like you and Destiny, Kelsey, need to make plans to meet up one another 
and a nice place that's not too crowded. Don't go to IHOP, bitch. Okay? A nice place where you can sit and look each other in the face, eye contact. And what might also help is maybe the night before or maybe a couple days before, you can write down what you have on your chest, what you have on your heart that's so heavy. And instead of blurting it out, you know what I'm saying? Write it down so that way you know what to talk about. You know how to get through this instead of it causing a scene. You know, when you have a friendship with somebody and, and you've been friends with her for a minute because she's 30, you you know, with this day and age, it's hard to find a good friend. And, and trust me when I tell you, it's really hard to find a good friend. And when you had a good friend for so long, you're definitely going to have a falling out. You're definitely going to have an argument. And sometimes things are said that really should not have been. But you know what? At the end of the day, we all human. Let's not, let's not like end the relationship on bad terms because listen, we don't live for too long. We only live one life. And if you got a good friend, try to keep them. You know what I'm saying? And just let her know that you are friends with the both of her. Her and him. You know what I'm saying? Because you did say that was your friend that she's dating. And even though that's your friend, she is also your friend too. So you kind of like bias in the middle. But it seems like she's more your friend than he is. And I get that. You know, sisterly love, girly love. I get the fact that you want to look out for her. And not only have you seen it, Kelsey, but... Other people have seen it too. And you need to write that down and bring that up to her. Let her know, like, look, Destiny, I'm not hating. I don't want him. I'm just trying to look out for you. I'm not the only person that told you this. And that's the number one key factor too. You are not the only person who's told her that she should have been left him a long time ago. Girl, I would have been left that nigga a long time ago, okay? It take a relationship to teach you about the next relationship. Like, straight up. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, in my past, relationship with that nigga that used to live here I learned a lot of things like seriously and it taught me how to go on and look out for signs with the next relationship didn't tell me to look out for the signs with him it just told me how to look out for signs in any relationship like what to put up with and not what to put up with you know what I'm saying what not to put up with and you know what I'm saying? You From every relationship that you've been in, you should learn something from it. You know, oh, this nigga is a cheat. He's a lie. Okay, let me look out for the signs for this one. Okay, I did this wrong. I did that wrong. Let me do better for the next one. And that's how I really feel like you should learn something from the relationship. But old dude needs to get the boot. Like, seriously, Destiny, if you're watching this, old dude needs to get the boot. Nigga ain't even posting you on social media. And like I said, I get that. You don't have to. But if he bragging on other people on social media, bitch, please. You know, you know what I would do. I just wouldn't even fuck with you no more. And it ain't got nothing to do about the social media, but it has to do with the fact that don't nobody know y'all are the boo thing. Y'all been together for 10 years. Like, I'm not saying everybody got to be in your business. I'm not saying that everybody got to be in your relationship. But if nobody don't even know that y'all is a couple, unless certain people know, then there says, that says a lot about him. What I'm feeling that he's using Destiny for is convenience. You know what I'm saying? Y'all know a nigga could use you for convenience at any time. Because you convenient. Oh, okay, well, you know, I'm going to get some booty tonight from her. I'm going to just call up Destiny, even though nobody will know we fucking. I'm smashing it. You know, I'm going to just hook up. You know, I feel like he's using her for convenience. You know what I'm saying? Money. Could be that. It could be anything. At, at 10 years, come on now. You know he got some. He got got something from her. So you mean to tell me at the age of 21... Destiny to told the dude, by the age of 25, I'ma need to know where we going with this. You giving that nigga four years to decide if he wanna be in like a relationship with you like that, like that? Like four years ain't long, but that shit is long enough to be miserable and be irritated by somebody and to be strung along by somebody? Man, listen, you would not be stringing my ass along for four fucking years. And who, when did she even tell him this? She told him this at the age of 21. So she had to be 20 when she started fucking with him. So at the age of 21, you told him, I'm gonna need to know where we going by the age of 25. Like, okay, like who's waiting around four years for some nigga to tell him that they worthy enough for them. And so at the age of 25, what did he tell her? Oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to start posting you on Instagram and Facebook and letting the world know that we smashing. Like, girl, bye. And then at the age of 25, she done told him, well, I'm going to need to have a baby by the age of 28 and married. And so now she's 30. If you have to keep reminding a man 
what he needs to do in a relationship, then honey, it's not a relationship. You just need to go ahead about your business. I'll be damned if I'm about to tell a dude at the age of 21, by 25, I'm gonna need to know where we going with this. You're definitely not going to the altar with that. That's for damn sure. Like if you have to remind a nigga like bye, and I'm gonna give you four years, four years, honey, to tell me where we going with this relationship. And if I don't hear anything that I want to hear by the age of 25, I'm out the door. Well, obviously, he must have told you something that you wanted to hear or you just kept being strung along and you just was that desperate and lonely that you had to be in a relationship. Listen, I'll be damned if I'm going to be in a relationship with somebody who ain't really committed to me, who don't really want to have the same things that I have. Like I said, you could be miserable alone. And here's the thing, girls. You ain't even got to be miserable alone because, yeah, you were in a relationship and that relationship makes you miserable or doesn't even make you but so happy. You don't even have to be miserable. You're just in a relationship that doesn't really make you happy, okay? I'm not so happy. Half the time, I'm happy. I get that. But I'm not going to stay in that relationship because I'm not so happy or because I want to be in a relationship, I'm going to leave the relationship. And of course, when you leave the relationship, you're not going to be what? So happy. However, over time, you're going to be happy. Some shit just ain't meant to be. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I told you guys before, um, God put people in your, your life for a reason. Your friend, she going to get there in a the point of her life. You know what I'm saying? But it don't matter how many times you tell her or somebody else tell her, that person ain't going to leave until they ready to leave, you know what I'm saying? And it might take something really traumatic for her to leave, and it might not. But you could tell them until you blue in the face, until you purple, until you done passed out from fucking telling them. They not gonna leave until they ready to you leave. You know, I've, I've gotten questioned, you don't, you don't miss being in a relationship? Nah, because first I gotta be in a relationship with myself, in a relationship with God. I don't need to be with nobody until I'm content with myself, and so I'm happy with myself and my life. And you know what I'm saying? And that's how I feel. Your friend, Kelsey, she gonna get to a point in her life where I hope she don't be like my mom's friend who's been with the same nigga for 20 years and don't do shit. I pray for her and I pray that she'll get that to that point in her life where she gonna realize like I could do better. It's never too late to think that you could do better. Like seriously, some people feel like, well, I've been with this person for X, Y, Z amount of times. I might as well just stick with him. Why? So you mean to tell me you're going to sit here and allow this nigga to make the rest of your life fucking miserable? Or this female to make the rest of your life fucking miserable? Because you've been with them for that many? Girl, I wouldn't give a fuck if I had one, two years left to live. I'm going to get rid of that fucking rubbish and move on with my the rest of my life. Like, seriously. Why would you, anyone allow someone to make them feel less of the person? Kelsey, what you need to do is have a good old conversation with your friend early in the morning. I say this to y'all because morning is always the best time. It's a new day. You know what I'm saying? The sun has risen, but I tell you what, don't stop trying to be a friend. Your fallout was just a part of her that she just ain't ready to accept yet. She ain't ready for truth. You know what I'm saying? She's just not ready for truth. But as a friend, if you're a real friend, don't give up. And just sit down, write down the things that you want to say to her so that way when they do come out, they don't come out so harsh. What would y'all do if that was your friend and she said some foul shit to you? But you guys, you know, let Kelsey know what you would do in this situation. I'm going to go because I got some things to do. But yeah, I love you all. Make sure you rate, comment, subscribe to this channel. And rate, comment, and all that stuff because, you know, it helps me hit a like, any like, leave a comment. It's free and it helped me, you know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna see y'all on the next Real Talk.